Hi, Chris here. Today we're gonna to show you how to install Undoor on your garage. Some things you're going to need are a step ladder, hammer drill, tape, a drill driver, a tape measure, some personal protective equipment, a pencil or a sharpie, screwdriver, hammer, scissors, uh, a bottle full of water with dish soap, your undoor package and your replacement door seal. So now we have our tools and equipment ready to go. We have our undoor. Make sure you have your new garage door seal that's the right size, otherwise you're going to have a noticeable gap across the bottom of your garage door. So don't start without this. So now I'm going to show you how easy this is to install on my garage. And step one is installing Undoor. With your door closed, Take the pencil and mark a line where your current door seal touches the floor. Do this on both sides of the door. The pencil line is simply used to make sure that the undoor unit is parallel and the pencil line should be somewhere inside the two trailing legs depending on the thickness of your door. Make sure not to jam the undoor unit into the weather stripping when you're applying it. Simply set it so that it makes contact with the weather stripping and is still parallel with the pencil line. Also, the nose of the undoor unit should be just inside the depth of the metal track. And as always, make sure to wear eye protection and hearing protection as you use your hammer drill. Using a piece of masking tape, mark the depth on the drill bit that is slightly longer than the depth of the screws which are supplied with Undoor. Using your foot to hold Undoor in the correct location, start drilling a hole and then remove Undoor and complete drilling the hole down to the depth of your masking tape. Tap in the supplied plastic anchor into the hole using a hammer. Make sure it's flat with the surface of the concrete. Next, install the screw that is supplied using a screwdriver. If you're going to use a power tool to install the screw, only use it for half of the depth and then finish it using a screwdriver to make sure you don't overstrip the hole or possibly crack the undoor unit. It should be simply tight enough that you cannot move it on the floor when you're done. Now we're simply going to repeat the entire process on the other side of your door. So as you can see, that was pretty easy to install both sides of the undoor units. The next step is step two, which is replace the bottom seal on your garage door. Before we start, I just want to point out that if you're not familiar with the workings of a garage door, there's a, a, a very strong steel cable on each side of your door that is attached at the bottom and it's wound onto a very powerful spring mechanism across the top. You should never attempt to adjust that or repair it yourself. That is a very dangerous thing to do. All we're doing today is the bottom seal so you have no need to touch any of that mechanism, okay? Look for the uh, stop screws, which are probably on the inside ends of your garage door, as you can see here. You'll want to remove those so that the rubber can slide out of place. The other option is your door may have simply, uh, the ends of the channel have been pinched shut with a pair of pliers. You'll need to open that up with a screwdriver in order to slide the rubber out. Now we're simply gonna slide the rubber out through the channel in some cases, your door may be difficult to work with. You may have to simply take a knife or a pair of scissors and cut down the center of the rubber and remove it in sections. Okay, so now that we have our old seal removed, uh, I thought I'd give you a quick demonstration here. So here's a, a sample of the four inch wide T-bulb seal 
that we're going to be using in, in a larger section. This is a typical door track. And just to show you what, what you're going to do, you're going to take the rubber, we're going to fold it like a taco with these little ribs on the outside. The ribs are there to make sure that when in cold weather, when the door is in the down position, the rubber doesn't adhere to the cold concrete. Okay, so basically you take it, insert these simple little T-shaped channels into the grooves and we're going to pull the rubber through down the channel. Whoops, something like so. That's how it's going to look when it's in a new channel. So one other tip is that when you're trying to install the rubber into your track, you're going to need some sort of a lubricant. The, the easiest and simplest way is a bit of dish soap in a spray bottle or you can take a bucket full of dish soap and water and soak the entire uh, rubber in it. However, it's going to be a little bit more messy because you're holding it up in the air and it tends to run down your arms a bit. I found this works pretty well. You can also use certain types of spray uh, aerosol lubricants. I think WD-40 might be one. You'll want to check on that with your garage door people before you do that. This is a very harmless thing to do. Very cheap, easy solution. So we're just going to spray the edge for the first few feet. Give it a good soak. So we're going to start inserting the rubber into the track now. This is the point where you're going to want that second pair of hands to help feed the rubber in and keep it from catching as you're trying to pull it along. Continue to spray along the track uh, as needed in order to make the rubber move nicely and continue to do this till you reach the other side of the door. Once you've got the rubber all the way across your door, make sure that it protrudes about a half inch past the track, then go back and trim off any excess from where you started, again leaving about a half inch of excess rubber. And the last step is simply to reinstall the stop screw if there was one in your door in the first place. Okay, so as you can see, we've now got our nice new larger diameter seal in place. Uh, and have to stress, it really is a good idea to have a second pair of hands when you're trying to do that. As you noticed in the video, you could probably tell we got into a few spots where it wasn't cooperating with us. Sometimes it pops out of the channel as you're trying to put the little rubber tees into the channel and it, it, you have to just work at it. But we were probably 10 minutes getting that seal in place. We've trimmed off the ends, so there's a little bit of excess. You saw us put in the a uh, stop screw that keeps it from possibly shifting over time. And that's about it. The next step now is we're going to adjust the garage door opener so that it comes down and understands that we're now about a, another inch off of the floor. Uh, and beyond that, we're simply going to cut a relief notch on either side after we've reset the door and we're done. Every garage door opener is going to have a slightly different way of modifying the height of the door, but they're all going to follow something similar. Uh, we do have links on our website to most of the major manufacturers for you. So basically you're simply going to bring the door down so that it makes good contact with the concrete all the way across. You shouldn't see any daylight under the door. Don't worry about the small amount of daylight that you will see right at the edge of the undoor unit. We're going to fix that now. Next, mark a line on the bottom edge of your door, which is uh, just inside the rear vertical wall of the undoor unit, as you can see by this red line. If you have an eight foot or a single car door, uh, mark your cut line as it was shown before. What we've noticed is that the longer door seals on a 16 foot door or larger can tend to have a little bit of shrinkage over time. So we suggest cutting about a quarter inch further in from the back line, and that should take care of any shrinkage that might occur as your door seal settles in. Do this on both sides of the door. Using your scissors, make a clean cut through the seal at the line you've just marked on the door, and do this at the other end as well.
As you can see, the cut that we've just made takes care of the last bit of daylight and creates a nice consistent seal all along the bottom of the door. So, as you can see, we now have a complete successful installation of our Undoor product. Um, there is no daylight underneath. I think it worked out really well for us. So it probably took us under an hour for the two of us to finish that job. Everything went well for us. In some cases, your old garage door seal may be a little bit harder to work with. That's why that second pair of hands is very important. And it might take you a little longer, but it is doable as you can see. So we're about ready now to start using our Undoor product. We're going to start charging our car out here on the driveway, uh, watering the grass with the garage door down. Nothing's getting in that shouldn't be in or out. And uh, that's about it. So thanks very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed these uh, instructional videos.